In this video with the help of pure javascript, we are going to build this air to cart animation or you can call it fly to shopping cart effect. So this effect is really cool. Why I am saying this cool? Because no matter the what kind of screen that you are working on, this effect it works. Isn't that cool? So let's build this together. Without further ado, let's start. Hello and Namaste everyone. This is Jitsaru with Coding Design. Welcome to our channel. If you are new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Before getting into the video, let me show you something. I have already created the video on carousel or the slider. So at the right top corner in the iCard, you can check it out or the video's link will be given in the description below. These are the codes that I have already discussed about in the previous video. For the title, I am giving air to cart animation or you can call it flight to shopping cart effect. And also let's give vanilla JavaScript. Similarly, you can see I have already linked the standard CSS file. So inside the section with class name slider, I have already created the air tips with class name card and inside each card you can see there is image and also there is some products information and at the bottom there is two buttons buy now and add to cart okay and also these two codes are the code for the right and left arrow now if you are using vs code and if you have installed the extension called live server then in the index.html file if you right click and hit that option called open with live server then it will open it in your default browser with the help of this extension whenever there is any changes in the html file it will automatically refresh your browser so let's take it to the full screen by pressing f11 key so this was the slider or you can call it carousel that i have built in the previous video let's create the div with class name shopping cart and also inside that div i'm creating span tag with class name cart icon and i'm writing ampersand has 128 722 semicolon so this code will give you the shopping cart icon so for the icon you can use any third party libraries but i'm not using that okay now in the browser who is that icon okay so i have done some mistake that div should be just outside of that section element so let's take it outside of that section element now in the browser you can see that shopping cart icon okay now let's style that D with class name shopping cart. Let's go inside the style CSS file. For the class shopping cart, let's give the position of absolute. For the right and bottom, I'm giving one rem. Now in the browser, you can see that shopping cart at right bottom side. And also let's give the width and height. For the width and height, I'm giving four rem. Similarly, let's give the background. For the background color, I'm giving white color. I want to make it charcoal shape. So for that, I'm giving border radius of 50%. Now let's bring that shopping cart icon exactly at the center of that charcoal. To make it horizontally center, I'm giving text align to center. And to make it vertically center, for the line height, I'm giving same height that I have given for that white circle. That is four rim so now you can see that shopping cart is exactly at the center of that white circle it's a kind of a trick in order to bring for any character exactly at the center of its parent and also let's give cursor to pointer so that when you hover that white circle you would get pointing hand icon and also i want to give box shadow for the x offset i'm giving zero for the y offset 0.2 rim and for the blur value i'm giving 0.6 rim let's give the black color and for the transparency i'm giving alpha value of six so now when you hover that class shopping cart, let's give the outline. For the outline width, I'm giving 0.5 rim. For the outline style, let's give the solid. And for the color, let's give white color. I want to make it transparent. So I'm giving alpha value of five. Now you can see when you hover, you're getting that outline, but there is no any transition, okay? So now for the class shopping cart, let's give the transition. For the transition duration, I'm giving 0.5 second. And for the time function, let's give the easing out. And also let's duplicate this code and let's take it up there okay now instead of that white color let's give transparent so now when you hover yeah this is the effect that i want okay so i think it's looking cool similarly i want to give the same effect for the right arrow and the left arrow so now when you hover the class arrow we are giving the same outline so this class arrow okay now for the class arrow i'm giving the same transition value and also let's give the outline for the outline as well i'm giving the same value so now in the browser you can see when you hover the right as well as the left arrow you are getting that cool effect okay so yeah this is what i want now for the class shopping cart let's give the before pseudo element for the before pseudo element i'm giving the position of absolute for the content let's give the attribute so before that let's go inside the index.html file and for the div with class name shopping cart let's give the data attribute so i want to give the attribute data product count is equal to zero 
now let's copy this data attribute and we'll paste it inside that attribute function and also let's give top and right for the top and right i'm giving minus 0.5 rem and also let's give the color for the color i'm giving white color for the background color let's give red color okay similarly for the width and height i'm giving two rem and for the border radius i'm giving 50 percent so in the browser you can see that red circle and that zero text that is not exactly at the center of that red circle so for that we are using the same trick that i have used in the previous white circle so let's copy that code and let's paste it there for the height we'll give the same height as the parent height so we're giving that to rem in the index.html file if i change that data attribute what if i change to two so in the browser you can see that zero change into two this is how the data attribute is linked in between the HTML and CSS code. Okay. Now let's tell that span tag with class name cart icon. So for the class cart icon, let's give the font size of two rem. You can see that shopping cart icon is now in bigger size. Similarly for the class shopping cart, when you give the active class, at the time for the span tag so something like for the div with class name shopping cart when you're giving active class span tag that is directly inside the div with class name shopping cart we would change that cart icons css property so i'm giving margin left of minus four rem now you can see cart is moving to the left side similarly when you're giving the active class for the class shopping cart We'll change that class shopping cart's width and border radius. So let's duplicate that width and border radius and let's take this code to the active class. Now for the width, instead of that 4 rem, we'll change it to 8 rem. And for the border radius, let's give point 8 rem. Now let me show you something in the browser. So when you're removing that active class from the div with class name shopping cart, it will take the circle shape. And when you add the active class for that div with class name shopping cart, it will change into rounded rectangle. Okay, so this is looking great let's duplicate this transition value and let's take it to the class cart icon so i want to give the same transition value for the class cart icon for now let's remove that active class later on with the help of javascript code we'll add and remove that active class now just duplicate this image and just take one step up and now i'm giving class name flying image now in the browser you can see that extra image now let's tag that image with class name flying image so this all code will be you know like automatically generated with the help of javascript code so in the css for the note i am writing for js code for the class flying image i am giving position of absolute and let's give the animation for the animation name i am giving fly to cart for the animation duration one second and for the timing function is in out now let's create the keyframes for the keyframes let's give the same animation name fly to cart and at 0%, let's give left and top value to 0. And let's duplicate this code for more three times. Now for the 45% and for the 50%, I'm changing that left value to 500 pixels. And for the top value, I'm giving 60 pixels. And at 80 and 90%, I'm giving the left value the same value that I have given for the 45 and 50%. And for the top, I want to change it to 150 pixels. And also let's give transform. For the transform, I'm giving scale. And for the scale, let's give the value of 0.2. So let's duplicate this code and let's take it to the 100%. Okay and at 100% let's copy this code and let's paste it there okay now for the animation iteration count let's give infinite okay there is animation but there is some problem so it's because for the class card i have given the overflow hidden so because of that overflow hidden we are getting that problem so if i remove that okay now everything is messed up okay So now for the class car content, let's give overflow hidden and for the border radius, let's give inherit. So it will use the same border radius of that car class because that is the parent of that class car content. Now let's select this code and let's take it downside again. So now instead of that car class, let's give class car content. So if I save and in the browser now it's much more better so the z index that i have given in the previous code i'm removing all those z index in 
instead for the class flying image let's give the index so i'm giving the index of 100 so in the browser now you can see this kind of animation but i will take it a bit down so at 80 and 90 percent let's change that top value to 250 pixels and also let's give that same value for the 100 percent for the lift i want to add extra value so for that i'm using calc function and for the 500 pixel i'm adding extra 40 pixels and now i have changed my mind let's change that both 250 pixels to 450 pixels in the browser now you can see this kind of animation so i think this is looking good so these all values were the values that i have given manually so instead we'll make it dynamic so first of all for the left instead of that value let's give variable left and i'm keeping the top value as it was before and also at 80 and 90 percent now let's change that all the manually given values to variable so i'm giving left variable and for the top let's give the top variable and also at the 100 percent let's change that 500 pixels to left variable and also for the top let's give that top variable so we are doing this so that with the help of javascript code we can change top and left value dynamically in the index.html file you can see i have already linked my script.js file so now if you go inside the script.js file you can see these codes now for the shopping cart variable i'm assigning document.query selector so i want to select this debit class name shopping cart in the javascript file let's give dot shopping cart and also let's select that add to cart button so first of all let's select this btn border if i press ctrl d or if you press ctrl shift l it will select all the class with btn border for that button let's give that extra class add to cart and we'll select these all the buttons with class name add to cart let's duplicate that code and let's take it to the downside now instead of that class card let's give dot add to cart you can see i have used the query selector all it's because i want to select all the buttons with class name add to cart now for the variable name let's change that cards to cart btns so now we'll iterate that all the div with class name add to cart btn so for that i'm using the for of loop so i'm writing for cart btn of cart btns for the card btn i'm giving dot on click is equal to i'm assigning arrow function with event parameter inside that arrow function i want to show you that even the target value in the console so for that i'm writing console.log e.target now in the browser if i press f table key and if you go to the console tab now when i hit that add to card button in the console you can see that all the buttons that you have clicked You can see in the standard CSS file, we have given the active class for the shopping cart. So now it's time to give that active class with the help of JavaScript code. Now you can see I have already selected that D with class name shopping cart. So for the shopping cart, I'm giving dot class list dot add active. So with the help of this code, we are adding the active class for that D with class name shopping cart. And also after one second, I want to remove that active class from that D with class name. So for that, I'm using set timeout function. And inside that, for the callback function, I'm passing as arrow function. And let's duplicate that code and let's take it to that arrow function. And now instead of that adding class, we are removing the class. So let's give that remove. So we are executing this code after one second so let's give the comma 1000 millisecond so that means one second now in the browser when i click that add to cart button you can see that white circle change into rounded rectangle and also whenever you are clicking that add to cart button and increase that value okay now in the index.html file you can see for the div with class name shopping cart we have given the data product count attribute Let's create the variable product count. I'm assigning shopping cart dot get attribute. So we are getting that data product count attribute. Initially we have the zero, but that zero is the string value. Now we have to change it to number. For that I'm wrapping inside the number function. And also I'm giving or zero. So what if we have not given any value for that data product count attribute? So for the self handling I'm giving that or zero. Now for the shopping cart I want to set the same data product count attribute. We will change that attributes value to product count plus one. Now, whenever you are clicking that add to cart buttons, you can see that value is increasing. Okay, but I want to change that numbers font family. So for that, I'm giving font family to change shelf. So in the browser, you can see, okay, this is the font that I want. 
we can see in the index.html file image but that image was the image that we have given manually let's remove that image and now with the help of javascript code we'll give that image okay so first of all let's create the variable target parent and i'm assigning okay that e dot target dot parent node so now let's console.log this target parent now in the browser whenever i'm clicking that add to cart button you can see in the console we are getting parent of that button you can see the button's parent is that car footers car footers parent is the with class name car content and that car contents parent is the with class name car it's because i want to add the image tag just inside the the with class name car so we have to go through that three grandparents so now let's give two more dot parent node Okay, in the browser now you can see whenever I'm clicking that add to cart button you will get the D with class name card so this is exactly what I want now let's remove that console.log and let's create the another variable image so I'm assigning parent dot query selector image so we are selecting the exact image of the button that you have clicked and also let's create another variable flying image and I'm assigning img dot clone node and inside that you can pass boolean value by default its value is false so I'm not giving anything for that flying image let's give the class list dot add flying image so in the standard CSS file you can see we have their class flying image so with the help of this code we are copying the exact image of the button that you have clicked and we are adding the class flying image for that image we have created the image but still it is not rendered in the DOM for that let's give parent dot append child so we are appending the child this flying image so in the browser when I click okay there is some error you can see their query selector is not a function okay I have misspelled there so it's not parent it's target parent okay so let's change that parent to target parent in the browser now when i click that add to card button you can see the exact image is added so this is exactly what i want let's give some hints okay for you and now let's find out the position of the flying image and also the position of shopping cart so for that i'm creating flying image position variable so i'm assigning flying image dot get bounding client rect with the help of this method with respect to viewport you can find the exact position of the element not only that you can get the elements width height you can get the x y coordinates let's duplicate this code and now let's change that flying image position to shopping cart position and let's change that to shopping cart now let's see it in the console what kind of values you are storing in that flying image position now if I click that add to cart button so in the console you can see all the values related to that flying image something like bottom height left x y coordinates we are getting everything okay now let's remove that console.log and let's create the object I'm creating data object and inside that let's create the left key and for the value now let's calculate the exact distance between the product image and the shopping cart so for that I'm writing shopping cart position dot left minus and we are subtracting the shopping carts width divide by 2 we are taking the half width of shopping cart and let's add the flying image left value and let's add flying image width I'm dividing by 2 so we are getting the half width of that flying image after writing this long code are you scared don't worry i'm explaining it okay so this is the distance of the cart from the viewport and this is the distance of product image from the viewport and this is the exact distance between the product image and the cart but the actual distance that i want to get for that i'm adding the half width of product image and the cart as well as the distance of the product image and if you subtract all those value with the distance of the cart this will be our actual distance don't forget to give the comma and let's give another key top and for the top now i'm giving shopping carts position dot bottom minus flying image position dot bottom so with the help of this code we'll get the distance of the top position now let's console.log the data dot top so if i click that add to cart button so in the console now you can see we are getting that top value of flying image but this value is with long decimal digits and now in the standard css file you can see for the animation we have given the variable left and top so now we will change that value dynamically with the help of javascript code for the flying image i want to give the css value so for that i'm writing dot style dot css text is equal to backtick so this symbol in your keyboard just above the tab button you can find it out so the use of this 
template editor is that it will be easier to work with string and the variable and inside that let's give CSS variable left and dollar curly bracket and said that you can pass the variable so now let's give data dot left dot to fix so in order to fix that long decimal digit I want to fix it to two decimal digits so I'm writing there two let's give semicolon and let's duplicate this code and now instead of that left let's give top and also let's give their data dot top so this is data dot top and data dot left so this is the code that we can access with the help of this data object so in the browser if I click add to cart button what the hell it's not working the next early morning Okay, there was such a big mistake i have given their left and top css variables value but i didn't give any unit so you have to give their any unit the top and left value that we are getting that is the pixel value so i'm writing their px but there shouldn't be any space okay otherwise it will be a invalid value so let's keep the pixel now in the browser when i click that add to cart button okay now you can see the animation is working but there is some problem that flying image is flying at the back side okay so in order to fix that problem now for the target parent if i give the css value so i'm writing dot style dot g index is equal to 100 but you can see that flying image is continuously flying okay so it's because in the style css file we have given the animation iteration count to infinite so let's remove that infinite and also this g index is not necessary for now let's remove that g index now in the browser if i click that add to cart button now you can see that beautiful animation but if you have noticed there the flying image is attached inside the card so before that let's duplicate this code and let's take it to that set timeout function and let's remove that 100 and also to fix that flying image attached with the card problem let's duplicate this code and let's take it to that set timeout function now instead of that appending flying image we'll remove that flying image okay so let's try to remove child and also for the top value i want to increase a little bit of value so for that i'm giving plus 30 you can see when I click that add to cart button, beautiful animation. If you have noticed there, the distance between the flying image and the shopping cart, it is automatically calculated. This was the responsive slider that I have created in the previous video. So if you are working with the small screen, it is working for the small screens too. So now you can see in the big screen as well as in the small screen, our animation is working. Now, if you like the light theme, you can change it to light theme. So, just in the standard CSS file, if you comment, if you comment out these color variables, and also comment out this code. I think in the light theme, our animation is much more visible than in our dark theme. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did learn something, smash that like button. If you have any kind of queries, let me know in the comment box. Share this video if you think someone needs it. And also, if you haven't already it, hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell icon. Remember, there is always more to learn. So keep learning.